Hello everyone, I'm Norda Vita Binti Sabri. I'm a Malaysian national diver. Firstly, I would like to thank you to the organizers for inviting me to join all of you at TEDx Hanoi University 2021. It is lovely to meet all of you and I can wait to share my story. The early carefree days, I would like to start by introducing you to my family and this is how my diving career started. I come from a family of one elder sister, two elder brothers and obviously I'm the baby in the family and an adventurous loving parents. My father has a vision that I shall be an athlete because he was an athlete himself during his teenager days. He quickly signed me up for swimming lessons from the tender age of five because he realized that I love to play with water. That's why he put me, uh, put me up uh, for swimming. After a short period of time, he realized I can't really go far because of my size. As you can see, actually, I'm just one tiny person. I'm petite. Somehow, he found out about diving and he thought, why not give this a try? So at the age of seven, I started training with a diving instructor. His name is Chi Jianhua. He is from China. He's my state coach. So I train at Chiras in Kuala Lumpur swimming pool. There's a diving pool. I train for six times a week every day after school. So I went back and forth from home to diving training every single day except for Sundays. And my father was right. I really enjoyed my training and showed improvement very quickly. My coach started putting me up for competition two years later because he saw my potential. My first major competition was Sukma, Sukan Malaysia in 2008. Sukma is a big state uh, competition. I won my first ever medal. It was a bronze medal. I was I was thrilled and I fell in love straight away with diving. It suddenly occurred to me that I could really go far with diving if I worked hard. I started dreaming of making it to the Olympics. I even drew the Olympic rings and stuck it on my bedroom wall so that I can look at it every single day to motivate to motivate myself to achieve my goals. My life as a national athlete, uh, I was invited to join the national team at the age of 13. I moved to Bukit Jalil Hostel in order to train full time with the other national divers. We train for eight, we train eight hours a day, six and a half, I mean, we train eight hours a day, six and a half days every week. Actually, I didn't mind the routine at all. In fact, I was I was excited with this opportunity and I don't want to waste this opportunity just like that. I spent a lot of time with my teammates, you know, we train together, we eat together, we went to competitions together. My teammate is like my second family. Um, of course, uh, my family also supports me by making a family trip out of these competition events if they can. They are always waiting at the spectator seat and I can always take a peek at them for motivation. I'm quite proud uh, that I'm good at my event despite being a foot shorter than my rivals and that always makes me smile. Being a national athlete is not all bad and roses of course. There are sacrifices, obviously, that's life. I'm not able to have my family time during festivities. I don't see my family a, uh, a lot during... I don't see my family for a long period, periods of time because of training camp, because of competitions. My academic achievement is not as good as I would like it, I was, as I want it to be. And of course, uh, I have very little time, you know, socializing with my peers. In the face of a pandemic, 
as you know, COVID-19 has been a huge disruption to life, businesses, the economy and the world at large. It even, yeah, it came upon us suddenly and it is so unpredictable. We are all still trying to find our way around it and learning to live with it. In, in sports, it has had a devastating effect. The sports governing bodies had to protect athletes at all costs, getting infected or sick. The rules protecting our well-being are a lot stricter than the ones recommended to the public, which I felt is not fair and I'm quite jealous. We had to isolate completely from the outside world and that includes family, friends. We have lived in a bubble with only our teammates and coaches for company since March 2020. We stayed inside our hostel room and were transported to the training grounds daily and then transported back to our rooms. We were not allowed to roam outside our hostels and thankfully outside food is allowed which I was looking forward to it every single day. Athletes depend on competitions to stay on top of their game. It challenges us and also give us a chance to benchmark ourselves against our competitors. This keeps us on our toes and allow us to analyze our weak spot so we could make improvement and adjust our training accordingly. During the pandemic, all competitions were cancelled. We usually attend five to eight competitions a year and for the past one and a half years, there has been none. And I felt very devastated. I really wanted to compete. Many of us felt trapped and demotivated. We had no way to release our stress, stuck within the four walls of our rooms. Many of us suffered mild depression and pride, which what happened to me. We felt claustrophobic, stuck inside our rooms and craved to be outside to feel the sun and have some fresh air. We could only reach out to our families or loved ones through the phone. We spent a lot of time watching movies, playing games and scrolling social media platforms on our devices in order to distress. I know it is not a very healthy pastime, but that was all we can do. That was all we can do to keep ourselves busy, to not think about the days we spent in that sports bubble. On a personal note, I started doubting myself a lot. I lost my confidence. And no matter how many times I trained, I felt like I was useless. I, I felt like I wasn't good enough. There was even a point when I didn't want to go to the Olympics anymore. I, I gave up. I really needed my family and to be able to spend a relaxing weekend with them and have that physical support, have that physical interaction before flying to Tokyo, but it was, it was not possible, not even a bit. We live this way for almost three months until we flew to Tokyo for the World Cup in April 2021, which is our first ever competition after the pandemic, after all the lockdowns. We then return to this routine again for a few months until the Tokyo Olympics in August. With so much going on, how do I gather my strength together and find the calmness to overcome this storm brewing inside of me? Thankfully, I found a few ways to help to help my, myself. First, meditation and prayers. I fall back on my faith to find peace of mind and patience during these long days of isolation, finding inner peace and balance through a short meditation every morning and evening helps me to maintain my mental awareness. I even start do doing that. Um, 
mindfulness during and before I even start my training with my teammates, we did it together. Number two, positive affirmation. I search and subscribe to platforms that will send out daily motivational quotes and read them and watch TEDx and other inspiring videos to keep myself motivated and to keep my spirits up. Number three, look up to a mentor. I am very lucky to have my mentor physically with me every single day. She is Pandanila Reno. She is my senior and also she is my roommate. Seeing her handle all of, all of her struggles through training and life really inspired me to be as strong as her. She also gave me lots of advice on issues that I am certain about. We, always, we also do share personal things between us. Number four, surround yourself with positive people. This is really important. Your environment and the people you spend time with has a great influence on your thoughts and action. People with positive mindset will motivate you and inspire you to look at the world as always half full rather than half empty. So I think it's better to find yourself a positive friend. If you have a negative friend, just throw them away. <laughs> Number five, do not sweat the small stuff. Life will throw you little bumps, hurdles, and sometimes major hills to climb. Believe me, everything. Believe me, everything is not all rainbows and butterflies. But you need to choose your battles. You need to be prepared no matter what. You need to handle things that may come your way, but don't dwell on them for too long. You might get disappointed, or you might be even more downhill. Get downhill. Get over disappointments, forgive hurtful actions, get up, pat yourself on the back, and move on. Most importantly, be kind to yourself and trust yourself. Well, that is all I have to share with you today. I hope you will find ways to cope when you're not feeling strong. Take care, be safe, and most importantly, be kind to yourself and trust yourself. Thank you all, Trimakas.